So number nine then, seven marks here for, there you go, the wave equation one, and then a second part where you use that, and it's that nice little one where you've just defined the maximum value and when it occurs. But anyway, the first part, write this in the form of k sine x plus a. Well, you just expand that then. So it'll be k times, and the sine goes to sine cos plus cos sine. I know it should have all the wee degree signs in, but, um, ugh. And then I'll just pick out specifically the coefficients. So the coefficient of sine x is that part. And the key multiplies this as well. You could go straight into this line. And the coefficient of the cos x term is this part. Just isolate them so you can see them. And then you compare them. I'd rather put this one down first. So k sine a is the coefficient of cos x, that will be 7. And k cos a, that's the coefficient of sine x, that will be negative 3. A pair of simultaneous equations. Squaring and adding, sine squared and cos squared makes 1. So you've got k squared will be 7 squared plus the negative 3 squared. That's 49 and 9 is 58. So k is going to be the square root of that, which is just the square root of that. Well, a lot you can do with that, square root of 58. And it's meant to be positive, so you can put a wee note if you like. Then, dividing them, 1 divided by 2, that'll knock out the k's, and sine over cos makes tan. The tan of a is going to be negative 7 upon 3. So a is going to be the inverse tan of that, inverse tan of negative 7 upon 3. Now, there may well be two answers to that, but there's only one answer to the pair of simultaneous ones, because with all sine, tan, cos, the sine has to be, remember k is positive, the sine has to be positive, so that puts you either here or here. The cosine has to be negative, so that either puts you there or there. That leaves you over in this part, so this is where the angle's going to go. So what is the angle? Just taking the positive part just to get the acute one, it's a 66.801 and so on which means that angle A is going to be on this side, it's going to be 180 minus that, minus 66.801 and so on. So A is going to be, just to put it down, just right it off, 113.2. Well, we've put it all together now, so that then comes to root 58 sine of x plus... 113.2 degrees. Second part says, hence or otherwise, find the maximum value of this. So it must be related to that, it's double it. So that's going to be two times, oh, started, cos x minus three, sine x, which is what you've just done. So it's going to be two times this. It's going to be two times root 58 sine x plus 113.2. Well, from that, you can get one, the maximum value. So that'll just be this amplitude here, two root 58. And two, when it occurs, it'll occur when the sine is at its maximum. So that'll be when the sine of whatever equals one. That means when this angle, x plus 113.2, equals 90. Now you notice if you take that across, it'll be negative, it'll be out of range, because it wants x, because it wants x between zero and 360. So if that's not going to be enough, just put on another 360. Now it's just a case of taking that 113 away from the sum of those, and putting in the answer, 336.8. So that was a reasonable question for a higher, I suppose. Question 10 then, paper 2 there, for 4 marks, determine the range of values for x for which this function is strictly decreasing. Well, you'll know which way it's going from its gradient, which you'll get from its derivative, so differentiate it. 
So that will just be 6x squared plus 18x minus 24. So strictly decreasing. That means always going down, no rests involved, no gradients equal to zero. Strictly decreasing, as yes, you keep going down, means that that derivative, the gradient, has to be less than zero. So what you've got is a quadratic in equation then. You've got 6x squared plus 18x minus 24 is less than zero. Now, I'm just going to take out the 6 because I'm not going to use that again to find any values. So that just leaves me with x squared plus 3x minus 4. It has to be less than 0. And I'll factorise that. So I'm considering this little cubic, this little quadratic here. x, x, it must be 1 and 4, mustn't it? Plus 4 minus 1. So thinking of this, don't try and form two little inequations from that. That won't work because a negative times a negative is positive. That's no longer less. Think of the little graph. What would the graph of this look like? The one that you've altered, so that's why this one didn't matter. Well, it's the correct way around. And this tells you that it cuts at negative 4 and it cuts at 1. So when will the values on this be negative? It's between them, but I'm not including them because it's to be strictly decreasing. So it's these values here. So that simply means x has to be less than 1 or greater than negative 4. If that's the case, this will be less than zero, and obviously so will that, because it's just six times it.